In this video, we are going to take my novella that I'm writing completely in ChatGPT to the next level by fleshing out the characters in it. So let's get right into that and see what we can do. All right, we're working in ChatGPT today. And in this video, well, in the last video, we put together this, uh, basically this concept, really fleshed out concept about a novella about basically Vikings versus Cthulhu and how we're going to put that together. Uh, we're going to start, I think, with characters. Now, a lot of people have different ways that they go about creating their novellas or, or their novels. And uh, some people start with characters. Some people will start with a plot premise. I usually start with the plot premise but character comes soon thereafter. Now, in this case, it's a little different because this character has a basis in existing lore and history and mythology. And so that might color the results that ChatGPT gives us. We'll just have to see. But what I'm going to start by doing is just taking this concept and plugging it into ChatGPT, everything that we've developed so far. And if you want to if you missed that video, you can go back and look at it if you want to. Otherwise, you can just stay here. This is fine. And I'm just going to add at the end here, this is a concept for a novella that I'm writing. Today, we're going to flesh out the characters. Please list the important characters from this concept. So it should just give us a quick list of the different characters. And we'll start from that and then work our way up. Now, if you saw one of my la one of my recent videos, you saw me already do this process using Claude on a different novella. I am writing them side by side. So you can kind of see the differences between the two. And um, with that in mind, um, we're gonna, kind of just compare and see how it goes. Uh, but it'll be a very similar process if you saw that video. Um, now, one thing I want to point out, last time when I was doing this brainstorming, it gave me a bunch of information. And one of the tropes that it was using was the trope of the blind seer, which I didn't really think much of at the time. And so I just left it in there. I got a couple of comments from you, from, from some of you saying that the blind seer trope is overused and blind people hate it and that it's a little insensitive and I totally agree and I'm sorry I didn't catch that sooner but I you know I've listened to that and so I've removed that particular attribute out of the uh, description uh, I think it can be done well but you really have to do your research and everything and that's a little beyond the scope of of this um, video series so for now I'm just leaving it as a seer um, and we'll, I, I don't even know if the seer is going to be female or male. We're going to figure that out as we go through the characters today. So it gave us a couple of people and it gave us a couple of groups of people. So we have Ragnar, who's going to be our main character. We have the seer. Let's see. Okay. So it's interpreting, interpreting this as a he, we could shift it to a, a she. We got to keep in mind. Well, We'll see. Then it gives us the cult members and the fairy queen, which we don't really need to know about them uh, or the Viking allies yet. So these are just groups of people that we don't really know. So really there's two important characters and that is the seer and Ragnar. We can, we should probably have at least one more Viking ally character. Um, so I'm just going to ask it, let's say, can you give me a specific character to rep let's see represent the viking allies it's probably going to give me a generic viking-ish name anar ironside i'm just going to do a quick google search on this name we'll I'll just start with the name anar anar name one warrior battle leader all right, generic, but I'm okay going with it because it's going to be kind of a minor character. Um, I'm just going to Google now the full name to make sure that doesn't appear anywhere. Okay, so I'm just going to use that name. 
but that's something you want to do with ChatGPT. It's often it often gives you very generic names, so you want to check them to make sure they're not like very common in the genre you're writing. Uh, and who knows, some of you may know better than me and, and know that this isn't necessarily a name I want to go with because it might be too generic, but I think it's fine. Um, let's look at the description. A hardy and seasoned Viking chieftain of a neighboring clan known for his strength, strate strategic prowess, and fierce loyalty, Einar is a close friend of Ragnar and Lothbrok and a re revered leader who has led many successful raids alongside him. With his iconic iron-shielded armor, Einar stands as a symbol of strength and courage among his clansmen and other allied Vikings clans. He is deeply rooted in Norse traditions and beliefs, which makes him initially skeptical about the prophecy and the existence of the Lovecraftian god. However, his friendship and trust in Ragnar drive him to join the fight against the emerging dark forces. Rallying his warriors to stand by their sides in this dire time, his character underlines the themes of unity, loyalty, and strength of alliances. This, you know, this is actually not a bad description. And for minor characters, this might not, might be all you need, honestly. Um, just need a little bit of a paragraph about them and then move on from there. I'm going to expand this just a little bit, but we'll get there. So I'm going to create a new... Um, A new thing here in Atticus called characters. I'm gonna put this person's name there and then I'm gonna go back up and get Ragnar and the seer and put them in here. Oop. We don't need that. All right. So we have more information about or Anar, however you pronounce that. Um, and I might just leave it like this because other than, than this, I think there isn't much that we need there. But we're going to go through the same process that we did with the video in Claude, talking about Claude. And I'm just going to say, okay, I like these three characters. And then I'm going to paste the information we have so far. Can you give me a my and let's say an appropriate Myers Briggs personality type for each one as well as an appropriate Enneagram type for each and Again, if you missed the video that I did in Claude, this is something that I'm currently experimenting with. Um, to, to see if we can try and convey a lot of personality information about the character in, in as little words as possible. So it's able to kind of in, intuitively know a lot without having to spell it out. Uh, which I think could be good. And so, yeah, so we got ENTJ for Ragnar, command, uh, the commander. Commanders are decisive, confident, and assertive individuals who exhibit leadership qualities. All right, that sounds appropriate. INTP for the seer. Thinkers are analytical, abstract thinkers who prefer to work alone. The seer's wisdom, analytical skills, and ultimate betrayal reflect this personality type's traits. And then ESTJ for INR, Ironside. Executives are practical, realistic, and matter of fact, typically reliable and devoted much like Einar's steadfast and dependable personality. Okay, that's good. Uh, I'm okay with that. And then for the Enneagram, Ragnar, we have type 8, the challenger, self-confident, decisive, and protective. Um, okay, type 5 for the seer, investigators are perceptive, innovative, and secretive. Type 6 for the, uh, the loyalist. And by the way, if anyone is intimately familiar with the Enneagram, which I am not, I just have a surface level understanding of it if you see any of these and like that's clearly it's clearly making that up then let me know um and then we have type six for anr loyalists are reliable hardworking, and responsible okay so this is good so i'm just going to take this information and add it to the character information that we have so far i'm only i'm not going to take all of this descriptive information because i don't want that to be what it bases its personality type on. I, I want it to be based on the type and its understanding of the type and not on this explanation of the type, if that makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead 
and say, we'll go over here to Atticus and for Lag Ragnar, he has a Myers Briggs type of ENTJ, the commander, and an Enneagram type of, go back here, eight, the challenger. And I'm just gonna cut forward here till I've got the rest of that sorted. All right, so each of them now have the personality types and the Enneagram in there. And so the next step is to figure out what these people sound like when they talk. So I'm gonna say, given the above information, let's design what these characters sound like when they talk. Now I could leave it at that, but it's gonna give me very generic things that are rooted in emotion usually. And I don't want it to give me emotional information about how they talk, because if we do that, then they will always be talking in that emotion. Uh, like if it says that they're always angry or something like then that character is always gonna be angry when it's generating that character's text. Um, don't include any emotions, but focus on things like cadence, sentence structure, um, the ryth uh, rhythm of their speech, and I swear I'm an author and I can spell etc. So let's wait for it to give us a little bit about that. And so it's kind of getting there. Um, it does say here Ragnar's speech is authoritative and confident. That's a little too close to what I'm looking for, what I'm not looking for with the emotion. But here it says uh, sentences are often direct, concise, and purposeful. Um, and I might keep that, but get rid of this highlighting his decisive nature because that, again, is kind of an emotional trait. And I don't, you know, people speak differently at different times. They have different emotions. And so I I kind of want to keep this as, as a baseline for how they speak and not make them one-dimensional characters by making them always a certain emotion. So I'm going to go ahead and edit these down to just the bits that I like and include that. I'll show you my process here for, for Ragnar. Uh, we'll go say, uh, we'll just put this under here. Ragnar's speech is authoritative and confident. So I'll just say Ragnar's sentences are often direct, concise, and purposeful. And I'll get rid of this highlighting his decisive nature. His words carry a natural rhythm of command. Okay. Providing an impression of strength and cer certainty. Mm, I'll leave it for now and we can change it if we need to. He often uses active voice and frequently employs metaphorical language rooted in Norse heritage. I'm going to remove that bit because if we leave that, he's going to be <laughs> including Norse language like all over the place and it's going to be too much there's a captivating cadence in his speech that draws in listeners helping him motivate and lead his warriors effectively so i'm going to keep that first part but then the second so we really only need a few little details um but i think this is good and i'm going to add that to uh, his character here and now i'm going to do the same process for the seer and einar and then i'll get back to you all right, so I've got these where I like them. Um, everything's edited down significantly, but we have information about the personality types and information about how their dialogue. And so we could leave it at this, but I want to flesh out the main character a little bit more because he is a particularly important character. So I'm gonna say, let's flesh out the character of Ragnar Lofbrok even more. Give me a full char character bio sheet. And it does a pretty good job of giving you the basics of what you need in a character bio sheet it, just by asking it for that. But if you want, you can have your own character bio sheet with the things that you like and give it that template, that framework. Again, frameworks are important. Um, 
and give it that and then it can do something with that and that can be a useful tool to have in your back pocket to have a framework like that because then you can create something that is uniform for each character that you do um, but let's go ahead and just say give me a full character bio sheet um, for Ragnar and I will say be sure to include his greatest fears and motivators drawing on the Enneagram for inspiration um, also include a physical description and Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. But we'll see if it, what else it gives us in the full character backstory. Um, keep in mind, and I'm adding this because this character is known to ChatGPT, and so I want to make sure it knows where in the cycle we are doing this story. This story takes place just after the... Uh, Siege of Paris. All right, and we'll see what it gives us. Character bio, age, mid-40s, physical description, and we got a nice lengthy physical description here. Commanding figure, taller than most men, robust muscular build, okay. Personality type ENTJ, which, um, yep, Strengths, fearless and decisive leader, excellent strategic thinker, resilient and persistent, inspiring presence. Weaknesses can be stubborn and unwilling to accept other viewpoints. I think that works for this particular story. Prone to overconfidence in his plans. Sometimes overlooks personal relationships for the bigger picture. Motivation, as an Ene yeah, this will be interesting. As an Enneagram type eight, Ragnar is motivated by the desire to protect and secure his people. This includes safeguarding them from both physical threats and threats to their way of life. He is driven by a thirst for knowledge and understanding. Uh, desire for control also motivates him to counter the cult's actions. Okay, His fears. Ragnar's greatest fear is losing control, whether that's control over his own destiny, his people's fate, or the situation at hand. He also fears the unknown, particularly the uncertain threats that the Lovecraftian entity represents. Ragnar is also afraid of failure particularly failing his people, which is a key factor in his determination to combat the emerging threat. All right. This is pretty good. And it's pulling in some things that we've already had you know, discussed in the past, like his bond with Einar Ironside stands out as a testament to his loyalty and camaraderie. Okay, well, this looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to just copy and paste this whole thing. I actually like it. Uh, I have very little to add to it. And I'm going to replace what we had. Well, I'll leave the I'll leave the little one there uh, because we might need that. Uh, and in fact, I'm going to take this entire thing. I'm going to say, all right, now sum that up in two to three sentences. All right, and I'm going to grab these few first few sentences because I think they're pertinent. And this is what I'm going to do to replace this first part of his mini bio here. So now this is a little bit more fleshed out. And uh, because honestly, this right here, these shorter bios is what we're going to be using to feed the AI with the information it needs. Because, um, you know, obviously AI has a limited memory right now. Um, if we were writing this in Claude, we could probably put this entire thing into Claude and it would understand it and remember it. But using ChatGPT, we need to shorten it down to the barest essentials. And so that's what I've done here. Uh, and so now we, we now have three decent th uh, bios here. Each of them have a good personality type. Let's just give this a quick rundown i'm going to open a new chat so it isn't um, colored by the information that we've put in there already and i'm going to say the following are character profiles from a 
novella I'm writing. Can you write a scene of just dialogue? Because we want to highlight the dialogue between these three characters. I did this before in Claude and it was kind of hilarious what it ended up doing given that I'm not giving it any uh, background information or, or any instructions on what the scene should be about. I'm just giving it the characters. Uh, but this is a good way to kind of evaluate what it sounds like with the, the voice of their dialogue and can you really de determine between the three characters what they sound like. And you can also make some adjustments after this as well. Okay, so we've got the dialogue. This is actually not bad. This is some of the better dialogue I've read coming from ChatGPT. Uh, it is still a little over the top, but I do believe that that is because I haven't given it enough instruction on what the scene is about. It's just kind of making stuff up, and uh, it doesn't always do a good job when I do that. Uh, but really, I'm evaluating the cadence and the just the differences in tone between them. So we have Ragnar, Einar, we stand on the precipice of war, the likes of which our people have not seen. This threat, it is not our, like our earthly foes. The seer has spoken of eldritch monstrosities beyond the veil. Einar says, Ragnar, I've heard the seer's words. It is all elderberries and raven squawk to me. We're warriors, not children hiding under furs from the tales of frost giants. And actually, having read through this whole thing, I love Einar's dialogue. Like, I am keeping that exactly as it is. I think it's the best of the three from here, we get down to the seer. It says, Ragnar is correct. Einar, the Norns weave strange patterns, their threads intertwining in ways we cannot fathom. The runes have spoken, and their words, they are of dire portents. Einar says, and you expect us to put our trust in cryptic runes and the weaving of the Norns. We are flesh and blood. We bleed and we die. How do we fight against, against nightmares? With steel in our hearts and the gods by our side, Einar, how we have always fought. And again, it's a little over the top. Uh, but I think it would be okay in the right context. Um, Ragnar's wisdom ex echoes the counsel of the gods. The enemy we face is formidable, yet it is not invincible. When I opened the portal, I saw a glimpse of their world. They too fear, they too bleed. Then we'll meet them with our axes as we would any foe. If they bleed, we can kill them. Ragnar, you've my sword and the strength of my clan. So <clears throat> you can tell there's definitely some stylistic differences between the way they talk. Uh, which was my goal. And so I think we've got some good information here to get going with. And so in the next video, we'll start getting into the outlining and actually crafting and nailing down the specific beats that we want to hit with uh, each of the chapters. I'm planning on doing 12 chapters for each of the novellas. Um, and I'll see you then.